Hey dolls! So I have recently posted uh, about a week or so ago on my community tab here on YouTube asking you guys what questions you had because I was filming another Q&A. <laughs> Long time no Q&A. So um, today I am going to answer some of these questions that you guys have. The number one question, I kept getting hundreds, billions, thousands, not literally billions and thousands, but I kept getting a lot of questions on, Amanda, when are you getting married? <laughs> I really wish I had an answer for you guys. I really wish I had an answer for myself sometimes, but um, I have no idea. I don't know when I'm getting married. It took me like eight years just to get engaged, so I don't really know. I am not 100% in a rush to get married. Um, I do know that I want to live together with my fiance first. That'll give me an idea of what it is really like to live in the same house with him and kind of just like progress from there. So I definitely want to live together first before we proceed with marriage. Also, keep in mind that being with the one you love should not be determined by a couple signatures on a piece of paper or a rock on your finger. You know, if you are with the person that you love, it shouldn't really matter whether or not you are married. I do want to get married. I really do. I believe in marriage. I love the idea of it and I definitely want to get married. I'm just not 100% sure when it's going to happen, but I'm engaged and I'm still with the man that I love so much going on 10 years now. It will be our 10 year anniversary together next March. That's that's why my username has 31409 in it because that is the date that my fiance and I originally started dating. In case anyone was curious about that, that kind of answers that question. But yeah, um, 2019, it'll be 10 years and I am just perfectly content in the relationship that we have now. I know a lot of people believe in getting married before living together and all this different stuff and the way that our lives are currently going. Um, we're not the stereotypical couple that proceeds on to marriage and then family and all of that stuff. We're kind of going about it at our own pace and what works best for us as far as financially and um, with family and things like that. There are a lot of different factors that are going into the reasoning that we have not gotten a place together yet, that we have not gone out on our own yet. Um, just a lot of personal reasons behind that. You guys know that I like to stay home and take care of my mom because she doesn't really have anyone else with her here, so I am kind of like her caregiver. And he has his own thing with his own family that is currently happening, so we're not in a huge rush to get married, but we are very happy together and there's no doubt that we want to get married. We do. We're just not in a huge rush and we're not exactly sure when. So rest assured that when stuff does start getting put into action, like when I start planning and things like that, you guys will be involved. I will tell you guys when the stuff is happening. No worries. I plan to take you on my journey of planning my wedding and all of that stuff, but just don't expect it because, like I said, I definitely want to live together before we proceed with the next steps in our relationship. Another a very popular question that I have been getting throughout the course of my channel is, Manda, why don't you drive? Why does your mom always drive in all of your vlogs? Why is your fiance driving in all of your vlogs? We have never seen you driving in a car. Why don't you drive? I've always just said for personal reasons, and that's literally it. Um, I went through driver's ed when I was 16. I passed just fine. The only thing I really got 100% on was the written test and backing around a corner, which is funny because that's like the one thing that a lot of people don't get 100% on. That's the one thing I got good, but I can drive. I know how to drive. I know the rules of the road. I know all of that. I just don't feel comfortable driving. It's kind of an anxiety thing for me. I kind of go into a panic <laughs> when, like even when I was doing driver's ed and I did have to go on my drives and stuff, I I would get sick over it and about it. Like I would start throwing up the night before I had to do my drives because I was so nervous and I kind of messed up a few times when I was going on my drives and I didn't necessarily have the best driver instructor. 
let me just say that he was kind of a a butt. <laughs> it was kind of a butt and that kind of turned me off from wanting to learn how to drive was a lot of it has to do with who's teaching you. Um, Alan has told me many times that he's willing to teach me and I've driven his Jeep a couple times just like on the back roads you know where no one can get hurt or anything but it, I don't know it's just personal preference. When I'm ready I will. And that's all that really matters. You know, everyone learns to ride a bike at a different age or to tie their shoes at a different age. And it's the same with driving. Not everybody has to learn at a specific age and has to go through the hoops of doing it at a certain time in their life. Um, just like going to college or going to school or things like that, you know, like I never went to college. <laughs> I'm not like a grade A role model for everybody watching me, but that you don't have to do certain things to prove your worth in the world. I don't have to drive a car to prove that I'm a, a mature grown woman. You know, I don't, that doesn't define who I am as a person. Being able to drive or not does not define my age. It does not define who I am. I can do many other things that I can show my worth for rather than just driving a car. You know, it's not necessarily a priority in my life at this minute, but yes, down the line, life is going to change and certain people are not going to be in my life anymore and I'm going to have to learn to step up and I am aware of that and I fully know that and I don't know, it's just one of those things where the more people push you to do something, the more you want to step back and kind of not want to do it and that's how I've always felt about driving people have pushed me and pushed me and pushed me and I'm just like back off I'll do it when I'm ready so back off I'll do it when I'm ready okay it's not a life or death situation right now so I don't feel the need to go through with it right now but I know how to drive I've driven before it's not like I've never sat behind a wheel before. It's just, I'm not comfortable with it. I go into full-blown panic mode attacks and it's not fun for me. I don't get joy out of driving and that's okay. It's okay for you also to not get joy out of what other people get joy out of doing. That's okay. That's what makes you you and who you are as a person. Okay, here's another question I've gotten a lot. Do you want kids? Um, right now, I do not feel fit to be a parent myself. However, you guys do know that my fiance has a son. He is not mine, but he had him before we started dating. And I, I don't want my own children just yet, but if the time came to it and if we did get married, I'd have to step up and be stepmom. And yeah, that's part of the relationship. That's part of what comes with it, you know? And I'm okay with that, but I'm not in a rush to have my own children, to birth my own children just yet. I still have so much I wanna do in my life and I feel that sometimes, a lot of the times, when you have children, you kind of have to put a stop to your dreams. And I'm a really, really, really big dreamer and I, I wanna accomplish so much in my life and I feel that if I were to have children right now especially, I would 100% still give birth to that child and I would still love that child so much and I would drop everything and live specifically for my kid. But at the end of the day, if I can prevent it from happening, I'm going to. <laughs> Um, because I'm not ready just yet, but I also am a very firm believer in everything happens for a reason And if I do get pregnant, I'm gonna keep that baby. You best believe it So yeah, I'm not necessarily planning or in a rush to have kids, but if it does happen I will take it on full force. Do you still have your job at the bakery? Yes, I do I work there five days a week and we make macarons cupcakes cakes I frost sugar cookies and I love it. I've been working there for about a year and a half if that maybe a little bit and yeah it's awesome I love the environment there it's so just very welcoming and inviting and I love my coworkers. so yes I am still working at the bakery what are the pros and cons of being a youtuber Ooh, this one's really good pros I'll start with the pros first um I love to inspire people I always have that's kind of why I started my channel I wanted to 
I aspire to inspire until I expire. That is a quote that I used to use before I created my own quote, the So Long Stay Strong quote. Um, I kind of lived by that. I aspire to inspire before or until I expire. And I do. I really want to inspire other people that no matter where life takes you or what you've been through, you can overcome whatever it is and you can you can be bigger and stronger than you ever imagined and I just ugh. the so long stay strong quote I live by that every single day myself and I really just love when you guys tell me you know how much I've helped you or how much I've inspired you throughout time that you've been watching me and stuff and I'll go and check my PO box and I'll read all these letters of you guys saying oh you've you've affected my life so much and that really means the world to me also, I love social media and the fact that you can connect with people all around the world. It's not just in one small confined little area. So I love that I can kind of communicate through video or whatever with friends all over the whole country, all over the world, and just kind of inspire throughout the whole world. I like YouTube because I don't necessarily have to travel to like give speeches or things like that because I'm not a very good public speaker, but I can talk really well with the camera. I feel like that's my niche and I've developed that over the years. And when I got out of high school, I had no idea what I was gonna do with my life and I discovered this and just being able to do this has helped me so much with my anxiety and my, my social anxiety, my stress. Uh, YouTube has changed me over the years, so that is definitely a pro. I feel that I have become a lot more adventurous and spontaneous and open to just like doing different things like skydiving and all this stuff. I never thought that I'd be able to do that. I had these dreams of being able to do that, but they were always just dreams. I never felt that I could actually follow through with it until recently. And it's just such a magical feeling when you realize, oh my gosh, I can be so much bigger and stronger of a person that I already am. And it's just a very awesome, special feeling to have or to experience and the cons with YouTube is um, it is very competitive so it's it's gonna drag you down it's you're gonna post a video and it's not gonna get as many views as you hoped and you're gonna be sad about it and you're gonna think oh nobody likes me nobody likes watching my content I'm never gonna be popular no one's gonna like this you should never want to make videos on YouTube for anyone other than yourself. Because if you go into videos thinking and assuming that you're gonna get super famous and you're gonna make lots of money and you're joining it basically solely for the income and things like that, um, your heart's not in the right place and you're not gonna get where you want to be. Um, I It's one thing to like have the dreams of being big on YouTube and wanting to be popular and being successful and all of that stuff. That's great. That's wonderful. And if you work really hard at it, you can get there. Don't give up, but don't make that a priority when you start your channel because number one, income is never steady. Every month it's going to fluctuate whether you are a big YouTuber or a smaller YouTuber. Um, we all start somewhere. <laughs> we all had to start at zero, but throughout the years I've experienced really, really high highs and I've experienced really low lows just in a matter of a couple months apart from each other. And sometimes it picks up and sometimes it drops back down and sometimes it picks back up and sometimes it drops back down drops back down and the income is kind of the same as those subscribers your subscriber count is going to fluctuate all the time so the best i can advice i can give about youtube and becoming a youtuber yourself is number one do not focus on numbers <laughs> try not to it's going to destroy you as a human being and your channel because you're not going to be focused on having fun you're going to be focused on oh how many people are going to watch this oh is this title clickbaity enough oh are these thumbnails bright enough oh does this font look good you know like there are certain aspects of YouTube that it's really fun to express your creativity, like with thumbnails and editing and all that cool stuff, whether you do skits or DIYs or whatever form of videos it is that you do, there's always that outlet, that creative outlet that you have that you can express your creativity through. So it's like editing and thumbnails, like I said before, but also don't let the numbers take away from your joy. Um, and I think that's a con of YouTube is at some point you will experience yourself, whether it be sooner than later, you're going to start focusing solely on numbers. I went through it a couple times and my, 
my views kind of started dwindling down when I was focusing more on trying to please everyone and trying to make my content something that you guys will like. I also definitely want to include or like keep in mind your guys' opinions and what you enjoy, but at the same time, like, it's my channel, so if I want to put out something different that maybe not everybody's going to like, that's perfectly okay. You know, not everyone has to like everything that you put out, and if you stress so much about trying to please everyone, you are going to drive yourself insane and become absolutely miserable. Please never do that. It is impossible to please every single person who comes across your videos or on your channel because everyone has their own opinion and everyone has something they like and dislike and everyone's got something to say especially when they can hide behind a computer screen and not even show their face don't focus on trying to please everyone else focus more on making youtube for fun and let it develop from there as it should um a lot of the times i'll tell people when they ask me like oh I, i've always wanted to start a channel but i don't know if i should or not well, you never know until you try. You can try. There's no, like, you can always stop. You don't have to keep doing it for all of eternity until you turn 60, 70, 80 years old and have to retire from making YouTube videos. Like, you can just try it. Do it in your spare time, away from school or work or whatever, and just kind of, like, have fun with it, you know? Don't necessarily make it your, your job or your priority until it starts blossoming. If it doesn't start to blossom, you can. You can kind of just throw it aside and just kind of give up on it, but you can also push forward and make your dreams happen. So, pros of YouTube is that you can be yourself cons of YouTube is that you're constantly going to get judged, you're constantly going to get criticized, but never alter who you are as an individual to please your audience, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So, I love YouTube, I love you guys so much, and I'm so thankful to have been doing this for as long as I have, and to have the support system that I do. Not just you guys, but my friends and family in real life as well. Can you do a house tour of your home indoors, not just your room and bathroom? No. And the only reason I say that is because my mom is a huge picture person. We have photos, literally floor to ceiling, of family, friends, pets, everybody that has come into our life at one point, we've got photos of them up on our walls. It's my mom's house. It's not necessarily my house, so I don't want to be like showing off all of her stuff, you know, without her kind of consent and being aware of the situation. Yes, I'm sure that she would allow me to, but I don't feel comfortable doing it. I feel like there's a fine line that should not be crossed when it comes to privacy. And, you know, if it was my own house, sure, I'd make it appropriate and I'd show you guys everything. But it's not necessarily just my house and I need to be respectful of that. So, one of these days, when I do get my own place, you guys will see a tour, an empty tour, and a put together tour. Rest assured, it'll all, all of your all of your wants and needs will be met. But for right now, definitely please respect the fine line of privacy that all of us YouTubers, celebrities, and social media people should have, just like everyday people. And trust me, I am not a celebrity by any means. I'm an everyday people. Um, I'm just saying, everyone deserves their little gap of privacy and yeah so no house tour right now but maybe in the future when i get a whole new place Ooh, i also got another question about tattoos and what my future tattoos are going to be if i have any tattoos in mind that i still want to get um you guys know i just got my sixth tattoo of the little airplane on my heel inner heel foot. Um, I will link that video right here on the screen if you want to go watch it. Um, I do also have a full tattoos playlist, so maybe I'll just link that there instead. But um, I have six tattoos now. I have a heart behind this ear. I have a Hello Kitty head on my hip bone. That was my first tattoo. And then I have my Marie that Sanai Kawaii did on Instagram, as well as my matching Lady and the Tramp that she did that I also vlogged. And then my So Long Stay Strong rib piece right here. And then I also have my little airplane that I got. I have at least, at least two more main 
dream goal tattoos that I want. One of them is a My Little Pony tattoo, definitely 100%. You guys have always guessed My Little Pony whenever I'm like, it's tattoo time, what do you think I'm gonna get? And everyone always says My Little Pony, like every single time. That tattoo is coming, it will happen. I just have a very, very, very specific artist that I want to do it. <laughs> if you guys have not heard of Laura, Oh my gosh, this is her username on Instagram. If you have not heard of her, are you living under a rock? She does the most intricate, detailed, beautiful kawaii tattoos on the planet. And it's funny because like when she was first starting out or when she first became uh, popular through social media and stuff, I had contacted her, asked her if she'd be willing to come up here and tattoo me and all that stuff. Basically what I did with Sanai and uh, I never got a response. So I'm still waiting for her to travel because she does travel. She goes to like London and stuff all of the time. So um, she is like on tour and doing tattoos all across the country and all across the world, which is so awesome. Good for her. But I really, 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 really want a tattoo from her. So if she ever comes to my area, you best believe <laughs> I am dropping everything and I'm getting my tattoo done by her. Um, I know 100% that I want a G3 My Little Pony tattoo. I don't know if I want one pony. I don't know if I want six ponies. I don't know exactly what exactly design or anything that I want just yet, but I know exactly what I want and it's gonna be right here on my leg. Like it's gonna be a big piece probably, like psh, psh, pretty big and I'm so excited for it. I don't even know what it is yet, but that is one of my dream goal tattoos and I want Laura to do the piece because I it's just like a dream of mine to have her artwork on my body and I would absolutely love it. And I feel like her interpretation of the ponies and the style that she does it in is going to be absolutely beautiful. Also, I do want a back piece dedicated to my dad and I've been kicking around ideas with it for a while and I haven't really said exactly what it is. I haven't given any hints or anything like that. Um, it is going to be animal related and I think I've decided recently that it is going to be cartoon-ish more than realistic. Um, it was originally going to be like a realistic animal piece, but I think now I'm leaning more towards the cartoon look just because of all of the other ink on my body. I want it to kind of go with and I have a really, really alternate cute concept in mind for it. Um, and I, I, I really like the idea of it. I'm not going to give away too much right now. The reason I don't really talk about my tattoos before I get them or go into great detail is because you guys know how I feel about tattoos when it comes to other people borrowing ideas. Um, yeah, I'm very picky about it. It's, it's one thing to like for like instance my Lady and the Tramp tattoo, I don't mind at all if someone else out there gets the same scene where they're like kissing after they just sucked the noodle, like I don't care. I don't care about that if you get the same scene. I care if you get the same size, same position, same placement, same colors, same border, same stars, same sparkles, same colors, same everything. It's one thing to draw inspiration from someone else's artwork or style, but it's something completely different to just basically rip it off their body and stick it off you stick it on yours. I don't believe in that at all whatsoever. Uh, it's one thing if you guys are getting matching tattoos with like a family member or a friend or whatever and it's like total consent and you're good to go. Um, I've had people ask me if they could get my quote tattooed on their body and 100% if it's maybe in your own style I'd possibly be open to it but please 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 don't literally take my tattoo and put it on your body because this is very special to me. This is very near and dear to my heart. That is why I had stickers made of my quote so that you guys can have it and rep it on whatever you want without having to actually put it on your body permanently. <laughs> so if you want to get some so long stay strong stay true and be you stickers my depop will be linked down below. Uh, <laughs> I have very strong opinions and beliefs when it comes to tattoos and 
borrowing artwork and stealing people's concepts and yeah we're not gonna get into that because that's a whole different video if you want to see a whole video of me ranting about tattoos and all that stuff let me know because I can do that <laughs> one more question and then we will be done with this because these are usually really really long um, actually let's do two because this one's kind of funny would you ever do an ASMR video because I would watch it lol would you watch an ASMR video if I did one I don't even know what to do. I don't have the equipment to do that. So would you even watch it if I just used my normal camera and like did some quiet things with just my normal camera? Or would I have to go out and buy the mic and buy the sound equipment and buy all this stuff to be able to do a successful one? I'm not really into ASMR. I've never done an ASMR video. But, um, so I wouldn't be willing to go, like, drop tons of money on the equipment just to make one video for you guys. But if you want to see an ASMR of just, like, me being weird, uh, let me know. <laughs> Maybe I can make it happen with just the stuff I already have. Who knows? Um, the last question is, should we go on a more serious note or should we end this off a little bit more funny? Let's go, let's go a little bit more comical on the end of this, um, because we did have a little serious moment when we were talking about YouTube. Uh, are you allergic to cats? <laughs> no, I'm not allergic to cats. I never have been. I'm just more of a dog person. Uh, my mom has a cat, and you'll see her, like, all the time on my Snapchat and sometimes my Instagram and stuff. So if you ever want to see pictures of her and stuff of her, follow my Snapchat and Instagram right here yeah so no i'm not allergic to cats i just prefer dogs but yeah i think that's gonna be it for this video um there were a ton more questions but obviously i can't answer every single one of them because i talk way too much for each one you guys know this thanks for hanging out with me and for listening to me ramble yet again um i really want to bring back barbie vlogs you guys said you wanted an asmr video you guys want more apple watch videos I have, excuse me, I have an iPhone case collection video coming up, which I know you guys have been so excited for. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. And as far as my YouTube schedule goes, it's kind of just all up in the air. I'm sorry about that. Work kind of takes over everything. So I haven't been able to pri prioritize YouTube as much as I would like. So I am sorry about that. I hope to actually like start creating a schedule for myself and for you guys because I know you look forward to and be able to watch my videos more if I had kind of like a set schedule. Um, also, I wanted to show you guys this real quick before I forget. Um, I did not get a side cut and I will not be getting a side cut, but if you guys want a little quick tip hair tutorial DIY, just take part of your hair and pin it up with a bobby pin on the side and let the rest of your hair fall down. So it kind of looks like a faux side cut. I don't think I could commit to actually doing that with my hair, so this is a great option. Just, you know how, like, people do, like, faux bobs and stuff like that? Um, well, not like that. That was a horrible rendition. But you know what I mean. Like, it's just fake, but yet it looks really cute, and I like it. So, yes, I look somewhat adorable with a side cut, but I'm not going to do that. Um, but just a little... That's how I do that, just so you guys know. It's just nothing, no rocket science or anything like that. Easy peasy literally costs like negative three cents because bobby pins are so cheap. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna stop blabbing now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do you guys like when I talk a little bit more? Or do you like the stuff when I just like jump into what I'm supposed to talk about and then be done? Do you guys like the chitty chatty stuff? Because I do, I always have. It makes me feel a little bit more personal with you guys. I feel like I can kind of bond with you a little bit more if I do kind of throw in my own personal touch and discussion with things. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go because my eyelashes wanted to fly off my eye right now. And I'm going to go before that is a tragic disaster. So, <laughs> until next time, so long, stay strong, stay true, and be you. All right, bye!